Okay, so this shear is something different. We've been learning, I think, for about three years by now. And it's the first time I think we're going getting into Choshe Mishpat. Dine Shoimim. <coughs> Judging by your Mara Mekoimis, I assume that you focused on the Sugi of Mesa Machmes Malocha, which is. No, no, Rav Shul, let me like. No, that's not. That's, if I could just clarify, that's for uh, another share. What we did was, Rabbeinish was Mazaka. <laughs> Us with the Kuntris, as I said. So we went through the basic Marmakimis for the Rav's uh, Yisaidis and Hilchais Shimron. So, okay, uh, okay. So, that, so, so that's what we're doing. Uh, we, we could discuss Mesa Machim Samocha maybe next week. I don't know what your plans are, but today I will focus on Yisaid Chiyuv Shimron. So let me give you <coughs> a brief introduction to Choshemishbet in general. Kol chiyuvei hatashlumin shebetayla fit into one of three categories. There is no reason a person is obliged to pay another person only because of one of three different reasons. Number one, if you did something wrong, you wrong another person. And that would include Gnevik Zela, Chayvel Umazik, Oines Umefate, many alohas, in which we find that a person needs to pay compensation. And I'm using the English language. Sometimes a monetary obligation. Right around, is the, they have a problem. Is the Rav's camera on? We see the Rav perfectly. We Robert, see it. Yeah, no Robert, no problem. He's perfect. We see the Rav. We see the Rav. Okay. And you hear me as well? Yes. Baruch Hashem. All is well. Okay. So I started off by saying there is no monetary obligation only based on one of three criteria. When you purchase an object, the money you pay is not compensation, it is payment. When you hurt another person, whether it's theft, robbery, battery, whatever it is, you need to compensate it. So number one is, Hashem kol oise avel. When you do something wrong and you what you did incurred a loss to another party, you need to compensate him. Even though you got no benefit. I didn't benefit anything. But I caused a loss to another person. That is number one. And that would include all the halachas of Geneva, Gzela, Chayvel, Mazik, Oines, Mefate. Fundamentally speaking, one of the 14 Svoram in Mishnah Torah is Nezikin. That's Nezikin. Number two, Tumura. You got benefit, you pay for it. So the reason you pay is not because of the loss you caused another person, but rather because of the benefit that you gain. And that would include all the halachas of mekach umemkar. You bought. Goes without saying, you need to pay for your what you acquired. Priyaz valchayv. You took money. You give back that money. Nehene. Nehene is a concept which I don't, I'm not sure all of you are familiar with, but if my animal went into another person's backyard or another person's field that my animal consumed some of his stuff. I need to pay. I didn't purchase. I didn't send my animal into that field. 
the animal just went on its own. But I, I need to pay because I achieved the benefit. I did no wrong. I didn't wrong anyone. Kibalta tishalev. You acquired, you derived benefit, you're expected to pay for it. That's number two. Number three is chayvus. I took it upon myself. So uh, by every tenoyim, if you, well, all of us participated many times in an Amesiva Seirusin in a tenoyim. So the Machut Namakabal Kenyan, usually they pick up a handkerchief. What's that about? It's chayvus. You need a Kenyan to take any obligation upon yourself. I did no wrong. I acquired no benefit. So why do I have to pay $100,000 to my son-in-law or to my daughter-in-law in the context of the shidduch? It's not that I gained anything. I achieved benefit and I need to pay for it. I did no wrong. That is the concept of Ischaius. So I know the Mishayev Behevel Peh, the fact that I promised to give a gift is not obligating. You need a Kenyan to be Mishayev. So these are the three fundamentals, and all Chayove Amomen Shabbatoira must fit into one of these three categories, and they are all encompassing. There is no Chiyav Momen unless it is based on Tmura, Avel, Hizchayvis, which means sometimes I need to pay because I cause loss to another person. Sometimes I need to pay because I acquired benefit from another person. Sometimes I need to pay just because I took upon myself to pay. I cause no loss to another. I achieve no benefit from another. And that is what we do about every Tanoim. You make our opinion, you lift up a guard or three tfachim, and you take upon yourself to give a gift. If you're promised a gift without a Kenyan, the Gemara says it's just mechusrei amona, and that's a big sugyam baba metziyam and test, but you're not obliged to pay unless you are mischayi varidei Kenyan. So my fundamental question, which I start today, Shir, is where does Dine Shoimerim fit in? Shoimer took upon himself to watch over an object, an animal, a car, anything. And I need to pay if it's lost. Where does that fit in? Which of the three criteria? One could say, oh, well, because if I'm a Peshaya, you know, maybe it's important just going back, taking a step back. And before Lambus, there are four different categories of Shoimerim. Sometimes I assume that everybody knows these simple fundamentals, but shouldn't be taken for granted. Arba Shoimerim Heim, that's a Mishnah Mesechet voice. Shoimachinam does a favor to another party. You know, you're going out to the country, you know, you have some precious things in your home, you're afraid a person might, uh, you know, break into your house. So you left the diamond ring and very precious objects with me. You're not paying me. Only if it was negligent, incurring a loss to another party. Shoy Mesoch is being paid. I'm being paid for my services. And because I'm being paid, I take upon myself a higher level of responsibility. Shoy Mechinim is not obliged to pay only if he's a Peshaya, which means a person gave me a diamond ring to watch over it. And it's on the kitchen table. And I have workers in the house. There's a maid cleaning the house. And the diamond ring is on the kitchen table. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's lost. That's Pshia. Shoy Mechinam is not getting paid for his services, and therefore his responsibility is minimal. He's only Chayib Pshia. 
Shoim is getting paid. And therefore, we expect from him a higher level of responsibility. You're getting paid for your services. Shoim is in the middle of the night, people broke into the house and they stole your stuff. I'm chayev to pay. That's not a pushaya. But Shoim is chayev. Soicher. Soicher is a rental. I rented a car. I rented an animal. <coughs> and the ultimate shoimer is a shoyel. My friend did me a favor. I borrowed an object from him. I borrowed his car. I'm not paying him. Shoyel kolan wa shaloy. Shoyel is chayev afilo ba'oinsen. I borrowed a car. I was involved in a car accident. The police said, I bear no responsibility, but I still need to pay my friend for his car. So in the modern world, there's insurance, but let's, there is no insurance. It's not a car, it's an object. I borrowed a tool, a tool, an electrical appliance, broke down, no negligence. <coughs> so what Chazal teaches us, the more benefit you have, the more responsibility you take upon yourself. Shoyel kolan shaloi. My friend does me a favor. Shoy mechinim, I'm doing him a favor. And therefore the responsibility a shoy mechinim takes upon himself is minimal. Pshia and only pshia, negligence. Shoyel takes upon himself the ultimate responsibility, even oinsen. The car broke down. I wasn't negligent in any way, but you still need to pay. Soicher, a renter, Either or So these are the fundamentals, the alad base. Now, I'm going back to my question. What is the essence of Hil Hashoyman? Is it negligence? I did you wrong? Is it I derived benefit? If our interpretation of Hil Hashoyman is I say Abel, we could understand the Chiyav of Mishay You were negligent. You wronged your friend. You didn't watch over his money. Even Mishay Mesocha, Chayav B'Gneva V'Aveda. It is somewhat less negligent than Pshia, but still, you're getting paid for your services. You should have been extra careful. You should have buried your friend's possessions under the ground, lock them up in a safe. You should have taken into account, sometimes, sometimes people break into houses. But how would we understand a shoyal that is high by Oinsen? Oinsen has nothing to do with me. I could have done nothing to prevent this from happening. So if our fundamental understanding is that the Chiyav Shoyimrim is based on Ovel, we can understand Shoyimachinim Shoyimisocha, but it's impossible to understand Chiyav Einsen. On the other hand, if we would explain the essence of Chiyav Shoyimrim, you derive benefit, and therefore you need to pay. We can understand the Chiyav of Shoyim. Your friend, the lender, is not being paid at all. So it's all your benefit, and therefore you need to pay. You take upon yourself a higher level of responsibility. We could also understand Shoyme Socha. You're getting paid, and therefore you need to reciprocate. But we cannot understand Shoyme Chinem. Shoyme Chinem derives no benefit. So what is his chiyuv? And because my fundamental understanding is that the difference between one shamer and another is not in the essence of the chiv, but only in the level of responsibility. Therefore, this brings me to a conclusion that the essence of chiv shamer is not oval, it's not mura, it belongs to the third category, his chivas. And every shamer 
takes upon himself, willingly so, he knows that he bears responsibility. When he promises his chaver, I'm going to watch over your, your object, whatever you give me. Whether I'm a shayel or a seicha or a shayim esochel, even a shayim echinam, should be aware that when your friend put a pekodan into your hands and you promise to watch over his, that bears responsibility. Not only chiv shmuir, but also chiv tashmuir. So our conclusion is Chiyav Shoyim is based on his chayos. And we could very well understand what we learn in Boba Kama Ayin Tes and in Boba Metziah Tzadik Tes Tikmo Meshicha B'Shoyim. So we could have the sources on our screen. Boba Kama Ayin Tes, Boba Metziah Tzadik Tes Tikmo Meshicha B'Shoyim. A Shoyim is not Mechuyiv unless he did a Kenyan, without a Kenyan, he bears no responsibility. So if my liability as a Shoyimah would be the Avel, because I wronged the person, you don't need a Kenyan. We have Tzadik Tess, Tzadik Tess on Pesach, Tzadik Tess in the cam uh, file. Please go there to Tzadik Tess. Tzadik Tess in the bottom I'm Rabbi Lazar. So if the Chiyav would be Tzadik Tess. One more. Omer Rebbe Laza. No, we're in service for some reason. Next page. Next page. Pesach. So this Gemara is fine twice in Shas. Baba Kama and Baba Messiah. Oh, my Rosa, can I say? The bottom of the page, the bottom of the page, four lines from the bottom. So a Shoima is not Machayev without Meshich. There's a Machlaikis, Toysvis, and the Rambam. What do Chazal mean, Tikna Meshich of Shoima? Tyson's understanding is as long as we didn't do Mashiach, each of the two parties could back out. The Shoima said, I promise, I retract, I regret. I don't want to take responsibility. The Rambam, I don't know whether he could have it on the screen, the Rambam says, Mashiach of the is, as long as he didn't do Mashiach, he bears no monetary responsibility. It's not only that he could back out, he doesn't back out, and the object was lost. He bears no responsibility. And that is the Rambam, El Chashirus, Peri Dara de Both opinions. Peri Bezal Lachaches, Pesach. Peri Bezal Lachaches. Take us a second here. Here we are. Okay. Just a minute, which halach is this? Perik Beis Allah Ches. Okay. This is the mach- this is where the Ra- the Ramam is chalik with the Taisas and the Rosh. Yes. 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 Just a moment. Let's see the Rambam. So the Rambam's interpretation of this aloha is not the Indian Chazora, but actually the Indian Chiyuv Tashlumin. So 
Let me take out the Rambam just one moment. So what I would suggest is let's go over to Chosha Mishpat, Shin Zayin, Haloch Siiv Beis. Give me the Chosha Mishpat. Shin Zayin Beis. It's also in Reish Sadiq Aleph. Which which one does the Rav prefer? Shin Zayin Aloha Beis. יכולן המסקי והסויכה לחזור בהם עד שימשך או שיעשה איך עוד מדר כי הקניין וכן אינו מסחייב בגני ובעבדה עד שיעשה איך עוד מדר כי הקניון. That's the opinion of the Rambam. Because the Rambam just brings the Allah HaTikna and he doesn't specify is that לעניין חזורה או לעניין חיוב. Obviously, the totality of the Inay Shoimrim. יש אומרים שמי שסילק הבעל שמירו סוי מי עולה ומדס את שוי מנס חייב בשמירו סוי. ואז זה הפינין של טויסוס, שזה שכן אורך ברגז את זה יש אומרים, בגלל זה שכן אורך מיין הפינין זה כמו הרמב״ם. אז בעצם על נקודת ההבנה שהיא יסוד חייב שוי מרו, זה חייבוס That is why he bears no liability until he did a Kenyan, because Cheschaivus without a Kenyan isn't valid. If the Din of Shoimim would be based on, I did something wrong by the fact I didn't watch over your possession, we don't need a Kenyan. And that would be the understanding of Toysavis. So Toysavis says, Shoimachinam, that was negligent, Shoyim Esocha that bears a certain level of negligence, you don't need a Kenyan because it's not based on a Shairis, it's based on you did something wrong. But the Sheikh on all sides with the Rambam, without a Kenyan, there is no liability, not even for Pshia, because their understanding is Chiyav Shoyim is based on is Chaibus, and there's no Chaibus without a king. There's a fascinating Toysis in Ksubis Nun Vav. But in order to understand the Toysis in Ksubis Nun Vav, we need to analyze, go over a Shtikal Gemora and Bava Metziyat Sadiq Dalad Amudav. So now we move over to Bava Metziyat Sadiq Dalad Amudav. We're going to come back to the Tysis in a moment. Yeah, no, this is uh, the Tysis in Subis, uh, Pesach. Right. We need the Gemara right. and Sadiq Bab Metziyat Sadiq Dalit. The Amud before. Tali Dalit Amud Alaf. Here we are. It is as if 
Hanoa. Go, go a little bit further up, Pesach. To the, go a few up, lines up, further. Up, up. Scroll up. 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 The top of the Ahmed. Top of the Ahmed. Here we are. The Mishnah. So, the Mishnah teaches us that a Shaima could minimize his Chiv and take upon himself less than the Torah puts on him. Shaima Chinam could stipulate, I want to be put in Mishavua. A shoyel could stipulate, I don't want to pay oinsen. And then the Gemara, the other section that we saw just a second ago on the bottom of the Ahmed, says the other way around as well. A shoyel could take upon himself Geneva Vaveda. The Torah doesn't expect him to do so, but he could. But let us realize, scroll down, so when a shoyme takes upon himself more than the Torah puts on him, he needs a kinyan. B'shekonami yodoi. Rabbi Yochanan says, Be'ahi Enoah is considered as if konami yodoi. But when a shoyme minimizes his liability, you don't need a kinyan. Let's say the Gemara. Amai, masna masakosa v'toyre ho, kola masna masakosa v'toyre tenoi botol. So the Gemara says, our Mishnah is in the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. And the Gemara brings the Maklaikas. Rabbi Yehuda says, So our Mishnah is Alibi the Rabbi Yehuda. And the Gemara says, No, even according to the Mayor. This is different. Even according to Ramea, there are mass numbers because of a direct noy bottle. Even by monetary issues, Shoimer is different. What does that mean? Why wouldn't we say the same when a person is a Makalish woman and he says, I don't want to take upon myself Sheikh's his voina? Why can't we say the same? This brings us to Taisus and Ksubis. So we go back to what we had on the screen one minute ago. Taisus and Ksubis in the Bible in the base. Here we are. V'yem t'amar hudas nam basoich l'sapoyani. Mas neshoi mechinem li espoto mishivu. V'parach b'gomor ha-mas nam mas kusa b'toyro. And the gomor answers, lo shi b'nashai. U'mayish no. Strange. Christ said. There are three different categories of Shoimerim. Actually, four different types of Shoimerim, and they have three different levels of Chiv, and therefore, any Kishoimer could just be on his own, stipulate whatever he wants. Inam, shana osam de chai vese toire shoyme sochar al shalakeach sachar. Shoyel afi shekolano wa shaloy. O mishab de matzma la kola kosa da pashe. Hel kech ba mokam she'en mishab de matzma pturim. What is the difference between the two different tiruzi? I think it's different formula, different words. But what is the essence of Taisus Teres? Well, there are so many different categories of Shaimim, and therefore, Shaimim could always stipulate. And then Taisus says, when we analyze DNA Shaimim, we realize responsibility comes with Hanoah, benefit. So Shaimim has no benefit. His liability is minimal. Shoyal has the maximum benefit. His liability is maximum, even Einstein. Shoim is somewhere in the middle, and therefore his liability is also somewhere in the middle. Toysis Harash. And whenever you have difficulty understanding in Toysis, the best source to look is Toysis Harash. So I don't know whether we could have it on our screen, but Toysis Harash 
merges. We have it. We have it. We so have the Toy Teros merges the two Terusim as if they're one. And that's wonderful. When I saw this Toy Teros, it made me so happy. Same Kasha. And the Gemara says, why? So let's see how the Teisarosh presents the Teretz. Scroll down. Scroll down a bit. The yes, Loima. The loy dummy, hochi, over cold dicht to the host of Masanaskos of the Torah. Hey, I had the high visit to the moment I did the Dovaraka. Boloi Machmish Helebed at the Tato. Kigon Shakes is Vina. High visit to the Machmish and Makashas Nam, the Hank Suber. I will show him a rim rips the Tori Shimer and Habish, and a hen and show your noise of the circle at Dover to Louis. Be that Atsman. And I'm sure you have it on the screen. Understands Toysus. Okay. Scroll down. Sorry. Thoughts and numbers. There you go. This is the section. The terzo. He quotes Toysus Teres. I would like you to scroll up. The terzo. The first line, top of the page. The Gabi Shoimerim ain't a heel of Elam Shim that Tori Yorg and a sub datum so the Yom shall wait some as high of the car. Shoimachin and Bepshia, Shoim Soho Begneva, Shoyal Baoinsen, the Kimen Dolly Shib and Nashal, or Hive is a toil. Now the Xoisa Hoshin is on his own, and he adds on to Toysus to answer a Kasha that Toysus asks in Boba Messia Nun Hasamadala. We'll get there in a moment. But before we continue with the Xois, I just want to make a comment. The Xois Echoshin understands Toysis, and he doesn't deal with the question, two Tirutsim or one Teretz. My conclusion based on the Toysis Elosh is two emphasis. Toysis in the second Malach emphasizes something that he didn't emphasize in the first, but it's the same fundamental Teretz. Chieva v'shoimer is different than mazik, sheikses v'oyna. Chieva v'shoimer is based on a mutual understanding between the two parties. And in that way, it's similar to Mekech HaMemka. So in the Sugi of Mekech HaMemka, if a person wants to pay less, we don't say masna mashikos ha-betoyra. Mekech HaMemka business depends on the understanding between two parties. In a way, it's the same with shoimerim. And that is our conclusion when we analyze four different shaymrim, three different levels of khir. Why is that? I would phrase Taisa's Teres a bit different than the Ktsois, but it's only words. I don't think I have a fundamental disagreement with the Ktsois. I don't think it's Yorda Torah Lasov Data Shalom what he wants to take upon himself. I think the Torah says what is fitting for a person to take upon himself. What we, what, we, what we would expect him as a decent person to take upon himself. So when you borrow an object from your friend and your friend has zero benefit, it's all for you. You should take upon yourself total responsibility. Right now, for the time being, it's yours. If your object would break down, who would bear the loss? You. So why would there be a difference between your object and his object? Right now, it is as if yours. Because the only person that is benefiting from the fact that it's your possession is you. Shai Mechanim is doing a favor. The maximum we expect of him is negligence. You promised to watch over my things. And you didn't. But beyond that, 
Why would he be a liability? Why would he be responsible if a person broke into his house and stole his stuff as well as his friend's stuff? So it is not that he always told himself that they should love what he intentionally takes upon himself, but what a decent person should take upon himself. That's the only formula I would phrase different than the Ktsois. But what the Ktsois understands in Taisvis is Shaimarim is not defined as Masna or Masha because of the Torah. Because it is not the Torah dictating to us payment. It is the Torah assuming what we understand as decent people we should be taking upon ourselves. And therefore, a person could say, I don't want to take this upon myself. And that would be acceptable. The Ktsais, let's scroll down and look at the beginning of the Ktsais. And that is where I have difficulty with the Ktsais. Let's scroll down now, the bottom of this very same page. We were there a moment ago. We go down the bottom of this page on the right column. And Tysus asks, why? Does it need a Kenyan? And ain't Shmira Bekakois? And if wants to take responsibility for Kakois, he needs a Kenyan. That's Taisa's cash. So it's a question we go back to the top of the page. According to his understanding in Taisa, he comes up with a terrorist. And I have a huge problem with this Taisa. <laughs> so the Ksai compares a Shoyma taking more upon himself to a Shoyma taking less upon himself. But that against the Gemara. And we go back to Boba Metsir Tzadik Dala Dalmuda. We go back to the Gemara Boba Metsir Tzadik Dala Dalmuda. Second section, not the first. Mas Neshoi Mesochol Niyoiz Kishoyel. Shoi Mesochol is taking more upon himself than the Torah demands. But Medvor Mamir. Shmuel says, you need a Kenyan. Rabbi Yochan and Omer, for the time you saw Kenyan, you have a Noah. No, for the Kola, the Incha Mehemna, Gomer Mishavet Nafshay. Both Rabbi Yochan and Shmuel clearly maintain, you do need a Kenyan. You do need a Kenyan. The only Mechlaikas they have, be a Hiya Noah, Gomer Mishavet Nafshay. And that equals a Kenyan. The Rishonim explained that's Kenyan Kesef. I derive benefit. That is as if I'm being paid. People put their trust in him. I'm not getting paid. And nevertheless, people believe me and they trust me that I will watch over their things. And that is be I know. So the Ksai Sachoshin, as if says, Shoy Mechinem that takes upon himself, Oinsin doesn't need a Kenya. And he explains it the same way as Thesis explains why a Shoy could take upon himself less responsibility than the Torah expects. Less doesn't need a Kenya. More does need a Kenya. So I don't understand this Ksai. 
He has a wonderful pshat in Tysis, but we need to understand now, bearing in mind Tysis, Shoimerim is based on the assumption that a Shoimer understands he bears liability. And if he clearly stipulates, I don't want to be a liability, then he didn't, then he doesn't. But when a Shoimer wants to take up on himself more than the Torah demands, that's just promising to give a gift. That demands a Kenyan. That demands a Kenyan. Less, yes. More, no. The only machloek is small on a biyochen and have is there be a yinua or is there not be a yinua? So Toysus asks, why isn't there be a yinua by Kaaka? And Toysus answers in two different ways, but I don't understand it. It says, compares the shoymet taking upon himself more to a shoymet taking upon himself less. But comparing these, these two Gemoras on the very same Omen, we say there's a difference. When a shoymet takes upon himself less, he's high of less. But when he takes upon himself more, without a Kenyan, that doesn't work. And it's one line, one line, one Gemara away from the other. And there seems to be confusion in it, so he's comparing the two, which I never really understood. Last source in today's sheet is an amazing Ramban. I don't know whether we have it on our list. Ramban towards the end of Bavabasa Kuf Samaches Amodarach. And the Ramban supports the Tzaisa Choshin's understanding in Tzaisis. Could we have the Ramban? Uh, we're going to find it. Uh, yeah, we'll give it to Rav in a second. If the Rav could explain the background, then we'll have it on by the time you're finished. It's the Sugya of Asmachta. And then a man asks a fundamental question. According to the Rav, the Omar, Asmachta lo kanya. Asmachta means when a person takes upon himself an exaggerated responsibility. And we assume... He's not serious about it. He just hopes it'll never come to be. And there's a machlekes. Is an asmachta binding or not? The word asmachta means somech al mashu. He's relying on something. He takes upon himself a liability, a responsibility, but he hopes it'll never come to be because it doesn't make sense. It's exaggerated. And he hopes it'll never need to respect his word. So that Ramban, Ramban Pesach, Chedusha Ramban, Chedusha Ramban and Babasra, Kuf, Samach, Amad, Alam. I was giving the, 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 the regular Gemara, but I have the Ramban here. The Ramban, uh, the Chedusha the Ramban. Ramban. Was incredible. The Gemara is a very well known Sugya Baras Machta. What we need is the Ramban, Kuf, Samach, Es, Amad, I'll take a picture of it here and send it to. The Ramban asks, if a smachta lo kanya, how do we understand all the chiyuvim of shoimerim? Every shoimer hopes he'll never need to pay. He intends to watch over the chayfets. So when he took responsibility upon himself and he said, I'm going to pay, it's just because he hopes that I'll never have to pay. And the Ramban down. says, Scroll down the Ikasha, different mask of Ikasha. Ikasha are Boshimrim. Here we are. The Ikasha Loch Ihochi. Now you went to, yeah. Our Boshimrim. Next part, there we go. Kachasla. This Lone Shimachin and the Shimach of the Yodoi. The Dam Yelemo Ivola Yavid. I will show you a lot of the Yodoi. Shall I be on it? And therefore, it's not within his power. So, the Ramban 
goes into the discussion what exactly defines an asmach. But the mere cash of the Ramban proves that the Ramban understands Shoimer is higher. First of all, is chayvos, like our conclusion at the beginning of this year. Not Avel, not Tamura, but a schaivis. But the Ramban proves a direct schaivis. It's not that the Torah is machayev, what we assume a decent person should be taking upon himself, but rather, I show him a schaivi, he took upon himself. Just like in Kenyonim, just like in Schiris Poyalim, I took upon myself to watch over your things, and I took upon myself to compensate you. And therefore, the question of his machta is relevant. If our interpretation of Dine Shoemrim is, Shoemrim is a chiyuv shal It's not directly because what you took upon himself. The Torah is machaya, what we think a decent person should be taking upon himself, then we wouldn't understand the kash of the Ramban. What does it have to do with the smachta? The Shoemrim promised to watch over an object. That is all. The chiyuv is a chiyuv shal So what does it have to do with the smachta? This Ramban proves the Pshat of the Ktsay Sechashim, contrary to what I would suggest. What he has in mind to take upon himself. But I still argue that gives him the privilege to say, I don't want to take this upon myself. Does not give him the possibility to take upon himself more than the Torah demands. To do that, you need a Kenya. So I hope you enjoy today's year because it's different in nature than most of the sugis we learned up to today. This is the nature of Chosh Mishpat. This is the nature of Dina Mominus. More nuanced, somewhat more complicated, but I tried my best to explain the fundamentals. And I will discuss with Rabbi Gadasman what we will be doing next week. I think we.